return. It's week three of our second ladder series of the season. We've had a couple of great matches thus far and another one on tap this afternoon. Well, Steve Reno didn't have his best week of his, for his 100th bowling uh, television performance, but it was enough to beat Bruno DeFeo and to move into the semifinal round action today. A couple of weeks ago, Bruno DeFeo knocked off Rich Kochi. Last week, it was Steve Reno defeating Bruno DeFeo. And this week, his opponent is Dan Allard. Let's meet our bowlers. Last week's winner, our number three seed from Southbridge, Massachusetts. Let's welcome back Steve Reno. Steve Reno coming in with an average of 123. His high single, 191. His best triple is 481. Bowling out of Southbridge at American Lanes and also in Munson at Munson Lane. Steve rolled a 654 in the roll-off to earn the number three seed. A 356 to 329 winner last week over Bruno DeFeo. His opponent this week, our number two seed, Dan Allard from Methuen, Massachusetts. Saw him seven months ago when he was beaten by Gary Carrington, but then again, who hasn't been beaten by Gary Carrington? Hoping for a better outcome today, averaging 125, high single 174. It's 455 best triple. And uh, he, he lives in Methuen and bowls at the Linway Rec in Lynn Mass. And there you get a good look at Dan Allard. Dan rolled a 660 in the roll-off for the number two seed. It's Steve Reno and Dan Allard. Let's get right to this afternoon's match when we come back to Lita Lanes for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNBS-TV. <laughs> We began with five bowlers in this latter series, and now we're down to three. First week, we saw Bruno DeFeo defeat Rich Kochi. Then it was Steve Reno defeating Bruno DeFeo, setting up this week's match between Bruno DeFeo and Dan Allard with top seed Dave Hodge waiting in the wings, and it'll be Steve Reno first to bowl here this afternoon at Lita Lanes in Nashua. And a nice crowd on hand, as you can see, and we are ready to go as Reno starts us off with a half Worcester. Steve Reno, 40 years old. He and Kathy have been married 14 years, three children. You met them on the show after last week's match. Steve brought them up to the podium. And the head pin slides but doesn't fall. His three children are Stephen, Brandon, and Alyssa. And Steve starts off with a 10 box. Steve's an inspector at LaValle Machine in Southbridge. Bowling is in his blood, though. On TV over 100 times. There's a strike. That one didn't take long, did it? Right in the 1-3 pocket. Watch it again. Watch it closely because it doesn't take long. And there they go. Here's Dan Allard from Methuen. Second time on TV ever. First time and only time, as we mentioned, at the top, beaten by Gary Carrington last April the 4th. It was 430 for Carrington, 364 for Dan Allard. So Dan Allard didn't bowl badly, but Gary Carrington was, well, Gary Carrington. Dan was the top seed in that latter series, and Gary Carrington came back to beat him. He starts off with a 10 box. Dan's 30 years old. He works in telecom for Sullivan and McLaughlin, local 103 in Boston. He and Heidi have been married for four years, and they're expecting their first child in January. Watch out. They're not done yet. There they go. You can't turn your back on candle pins. Watch it again. Watch closely. There's the four horsemen. There goes the seven. There's the four, the two, and the one. And Steve Reno working on a strike. He's got another ball to fill the mark. He starts it off with a half Worcester. Well, it's feast or famine, isn't it, with this pin action? He'll put five in the strike. Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV, presented by the Thompson family of dealerships, McMulkin Chevrolet. Nashua Mitsubishi, Nashua Hyundai, and Nashua Cadillac all in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the games of the New Hampshire Lottery. Steve Reno has one WCBC title to his credit. Last year he was rated number 17 on the Pro Bowlers Tour, the WCBC. Remember the uh, world team in 2004 featuring John Zappi, Rich Hallis, Rich Moran, Dick Duncan, Sam D'Agostino, and Steve Anthony. Nice note here from Bernadette Bunny Boucher from Worcester, Massachusetts. 
Mike and I went out to lunch, and Mike had asked me where I had, I had grown up because he hadn't heard me say <laughs> on this show that I grew up in Worcester. That's the truth, folks. <laughs> Dick, we're just kind of talking about the old days. Dick, where'd you grow up? I guess I wasn't paying attention, was I? Hard to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so stupid. <laughs> Dan with a nine in the strike and a ten box. Funny Boucher writes, saw your show, and a gentleman from Worcester mentioned the many Canopin bowling centers in Worcester. He did mention Lincoln Park, and I didn't hear of it. I had never heard of it. That's one I had not heard of. Now, the Lincoln Park bowling lanes was on South Lake Avenue, overlooking Lake Quinsigamon. It was underneath Lincoln Park Hotel and next to the roller skating rink. I would bowled there many times. I also was in a Canopin League from Crompton and Old, which was in one of the local manufacturing uh, plants in Worcester. She enjoys the show and watches it all the time. Bunny Boucher in Worcester, thank you very much for writing in and with that, with that information. And Mike will remember that I grew up in Worcester. I now live in Manchester, New Hampshire. I want to say that, though, too, as well. Do they have a uh, Dick Lutz was born here sign on the house? That, no. Like the JFK house in Brookline, man. They should, but probably oh, yeah. they don't. Well, they get around to it eventually. Yeah. After they have the postage stamp for you. Oh, look at that shot by Steve Reno. Watch it again. There are the 7 and 10. Beautifully done. Well done. Steve Reno had a bit of a struggle last week to beat Bruno DeFeo, 113-124 and 119. Bonus money! Watch the strike again. Nice ball, Dan. Go get it. Great shot there by Dan Allard. The four pin stands alone. Still stands alone. <laughs> Can't afford too many uh, misses like that when Steve Reno is now on a roll. That'll be a 10 box. All right, want to sit, Dan, want to sit. Sorry, young man, between tapings, Sean Higgins from Auburn, Massachusetts. And he brought his grandmother, Terry LeMay from Auburn to today's taping. He said the family plans their weekend functions around his grandmother watching our bowling show every Saturday and Sunday at noon. And he promised her he'd take her up to one of the tapings and he brought her today. So Terry LeMay, you're probably watching this now, but Sean Higgins was happy to bring his grandmother to the, the taping. And Terry LeMay, it's nice to have you here. Watch it again. Is it was a nice shot by Dan. Another $25 in bonus money for a mark right here from Steve Reno. He didn't like it. You heard the groan when it left his hand. But he's got an opportunity. The one, the three, and the ten. There it is. That's another $25 in bonus money for Steve Reno, who's really found the range. He puts it right in the one three pocket there and the three kicks into the 10. Well done. He has five marks in the first string. He threw that one away and he'll have to put two in the spare. The half Worcester. Hit it right on the outside of the head pin which is what a lot of guys try to do when they have a half Worcester. And he will take a 10 box. 112 through 8 for Steve Reno from Southbridge. Dan Allard has some work to do. I had a young lady come up to me between tapings, too, and she told me that Terry Quinn wanted me to have this newspaper clipping. Terry Quinn has owned and operated Lafayette Lanes for 34 years, and her grandson, Brian Fuller Jr., Rolled a 224 at the lanes. <laughs> September 21st. And we're looking at the box score now. He rolled six strikes in a row, had an open, and then closed with three spares. 
And were it not for a two fill in the last frame, he might have had a 230. Yeah, he ended up with 224, right, Dick? So. 224. Had he thrown an eight fill, he would have had 230. Wow. And how old is he? Just a young man. <laughs> 22 years old from East Kingston, New Hampshire. And I think it was his first night of the league. And a lot of uh, bowling lanes have running jackpots for three and four strikes in a row. He collected it twice. Yeah, he nailed $1 it. Twelve hundred and twenty-four dollars. With triple strike pool twice in his first six balls. I would love to know what his next string was because when you bowl that 93, good, three probably. Yeah. Steve Reno is bowling real well right now. Good first ball. Another mark for Steve. Falling easily for Steve Reno this game. Unlike last week, and you know how quickly things can change and go the other way. Picks the one off the one, three, and six. He'll still be in the 130s and a great start for the bowler from Southbridge, Mass. 138 first string. Brian Fuller's uncle is Jack Quinn. He, had, uh, he held the North Shore single game record of 202 at one time. So bowling's in the family, for sure. Nobody's ever bowled a 300 in Candlepin bowling, but this young man had the first six strikes in a row, which is halfway there. 12 strikes would make a perfect game. Nine box for Dan Allard. He's at 99 through nine. He could use a mark right here to get a little bit closer yeah. to Steve Reno's 138. Mark would put him about 20 pins behind with a good fill. He threw a good first ball, but That's doesn't have a lot help. to show for it. Got a pin off spot because they're not lined up perfectly. That's for sure. Oh, that's a nice spare by Dan Allard. I think the pin being off spot and the extra piece of wood was very helpful in making the two, eight, and the 10. Take another look here. See that pin in the back is off spot. And cleaned up nicely by Dan Allard as he goes for a big fill here now. Right on the head pin, spread eagle, put four in the mark and a 113 for a string. For Dan Allard, a 25 pin lead. For Steve Reno, we head to string number two. When we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Dan Allard will go first in string number two. He trails Steve Reno by 25 pins, 138 to 113. On. Right on the head pin again. Dan Allard is from Methuen, as is next week's bowler, Dave Hodge. So uh, should Allard and Hodge meet up, it would be an all Methuen ladder championship. Or Steve Reno is going to have a lot to say about that, I'm sure, as he is out to a pretty good lead after the first string. 25-pin lead, as a matter of fact. Dan Allard opens in the first box. How did that stay up? Threw everything at it, leaving the 8-pin. Solid eight. No wood to worry about. It's a nice direct shot. Covered nicely. Steve Reno has appeared now on this is 101st television appearance, beginning with Channel 5, also on the Singles and doubles at Channel 5. Big shot bowling, big shot doubles. The skin show here on WNDS. Uh, let's go bowling. World team matches. 
It all adds up to 101 times and probably over 20 years of bowling. He's 40 years old now. Great competitor. Some shoulder problems here a couple years ago, but that's resolved itself and bowling as good as ever. Great shot by Steve right there. Played the wood perfectly. That's a shot you won't see in 10 pin bowling, playing the wood like that off the wall. There's this, the uh, four horsemen on the left, nine pin in the back. We'll let the wood settle down. Again, the art of playing the wood. Chance for Dan Allard to uh, pick up a few pins here as he's up against a nine-pin box. Steve Reno. They're still falling. Still falling. And he'll fill it with an eight. No, nope, make that a nine. But what appeared to be a five drop turns out to be a nine drop, which is uh, to his advantage now with the spare. And another one. He'll need a few more breaks like that, and he's need to make himself a couple of breaks to get back in this match. His first chance now at bonus money. There's a six, seven, 10, nobody's favorite shot combination with some wood in front of the 610 and the 7 as well. It sprayed it around and picked us up. Watch out. There it goes. Was there any doubt, Dick? That's a bonus money shot right there for Dan. Earning every penny of that. That's remarkable. Steve's going to try and top that. Show me how to make it, Steve. So probably a nine box here for Steve Reno, unless he can slide it over. Hey, and he does. Oh, great shot by Steve. Well, he's, he's uh, giving away 10 more pins now. 15 pin lead through completed boxes. The two and the four with no wood. Ball just tails off right at the end to the left hand side. So another 10 pin box at best. And Dan Allard makes up some more ground. We're going to go to the break. We've got a very tight match with Steve Reno and Dan Allard at Lita Lanes in Nashua. You're watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Dan Allard is working on three marks in a row as we come back to action at Lita Lanes in Nashua. He's on lane 34. He's won $50 in bonus money, and he's looking for more right now. Trying to break up the split. He was not able to break up the split. He puts eight in the mark. And does not have an easy shot here. He kind of threw that one away. He's actually lucky those pins didn't come out and, uh, and knock down the other ones because they wouldn't have counted. He will take a nine box. A 71 half for Dan Allard. I want to acknowledge a note we received from Mildred McDonald of Hyde Park, Massachusetts, who recalls watching Stacia Zernicke's Sons Bowl on TV with Don Gillis many years ago on the old Channel 5 show. Miss McDonald, nice to hear from you. Thank you for watching. And love to hear that you enjoy watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV.
So the wood served as a roadblock. It'll be a nine box for Bob Allard in the sixth frame. Very vocal, rowdy crowd today. Supporting both Steve Reno and Dan Allard here in the semifinal match in the second ladder of the season. Right on the head pin, breaks up the split. Can't quite kick out the 10 pin. Dan's almost climbed all the way back. Not quite. That'll be a mark for Steve Reno, so he'll retain the lead. On lane 33, working on a spare, he threw it away. Missed the head pin, but still got a pretty good six pin drop. The one, two, four on the left, the 10 on the right. Got a shot at it. Oh, went all over. Look at Steve Reno. <laughs> He's down on all fours, <laughs> begging for a break. One, that he went, get. one pin went in front of it, another pin went behind it. And neither one of them touched it. And that'll be a nine box for Steve. Well, uh, Dan Allard has now gotten 11 pins of that original 25-pin deficit back, so he's uh, plowed through about half of it midway through the string. And made it a horse race. Yeah. That's a good first ball by Dan. Oh, that pin, the 8-pin uh, moved a little bit, but would not go down. It slid to the left. Got the 8 and the 9 in the back row with a bunch of wood still on the deck. Three pieces of wood still sitting on the deck. Anything can happen here. Not going to happen, though. Not going to make the spare. So Dan will be open for the third consecutive box. Dan Allard from Methuen. Average is 125. There's a good first ball and a strike for Dan Allard. Watch it again, goes across to the Brooklyn side just a hair, but wipes him out in a hurry. Well, because of our, our taping cycle, we don't always have the latest information for you on the WCBC, but we can tell you what happened uh, October 9th and 10th at Lita Lanes, and the men, uh, well, speaking with the women, Lynn Thompson won the tournament, followed by Ricky Justice, who was last year's follow-up or uh, runner-up in Bowler of the Year. The spare there for Mr. Reno. Good Cindy Cawley came in third. Steve, yeah. Janice McIntyre was fourth. And uh, Lita Lane's resident pro, Sue Halloran, coming in fifth place. High single out of the money was Deb Scandal with a 157. And for the men here at Lita Lane's and WCBC, about a month ago, Mark Gregory, who you've seen on the show many times, won it, followed by Dick O'Connell, Bob Whitcomb, Chris Sargent, and Dave Hodge, who you'll see next week coming in the top five. Jeff Surratt, who was in the Tournament of Champions winning the last ladder, was in sixth place. And the high single out of the money was Dave Barber at a 177. So congratulations, Lynn Thompson and Mark Gregory. Sue Holleran from uh, Lita Lanes uh, saw me with you last year, and she's laid down the challenge to me. She thinks she can take me on. I'll take some of that action. Yeah. Line up. When and where? Get in line. Oh, look at this go. Dan Allard, there they go. They fall for Dan. Second strike in a row. And we have $675, $650 in the triple strike jackpot. Coming up, there they go. Here we go, live action coming up. Looking for three in a row. Watch out, they're not done going. <laughs> Don't give up on them yet, gang. <laughs> well, he got his money's worth out of the shot. Let's put it that way. Have have nice around those three pieces of wood still standing with three wood pieces of wood on the deck and there they go that's a fifty dollar shot right there more importantly that's going to put him in front of steve reno now for the possible 157 if he can ring up all 10 pins here in the final box six marks in the string for dan allard a hundred dollars in bonus money two clusters of three and a good first ball there, and put nine in the spare. A 156 string for Dan Allard. 
A nice round of applause from a full house once again here at Lita Lanes, where this Tuesday we will be taping our next four broadcasts. You're invited to come join us. We'll begin around 10 o'clock at Lita Lanes on 101A in Nashua, just about a mile off the Everett Turnpike. Exit 7 West. And again, it's Tuesday, the 9th of November. And Steve Reno missed the head pin on his first shot, missed it again on the second shot. And now he's trying to clean up and get as productive a count as he can. And that is going to be an eight box. Things have changed very quickly, Mr. Lutz. It does in this game, doesn't it? So Dan Allen stands to have about a 20-pin lead. Going to the third string. Steve Reno will have a shot at a spare, but not an easy one. He did make this one last week, although he didn't have that piece of wood up front at the he, tip of the plate. He had a different piece of wood, right. Uh, Got to play the wood to the left here and see what happens. Got to hit the wood, though. That's the key. So he missed. He's at 110 right now. And that's what it'll be, a 110 second string for Steve Reno. A two-string total of 247, a 22-pin lead for Dan Allard over Steve Reno after two. We're coming back for string number three when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. You are watching WNDS-TV. Steve Reno will be first to bowl in string number three, a correction on the final score of the second string. We had Steve at 110, it actually was a 109. And a 22-pin lead for Dan Allen over Steve Reno. Headed to string number three. So that was a 47-pin uh, swing, Dick, from uh, the Dan Allard deficit to a surplus now of 22 pins after being down 25. Well, the 156 will do that. <laughs> it will. And it was really all contained pretty much in that uh, double strike and spare at the end of the string for Allard. Steve starts off with a seven box. Can't afford many of those. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address, bowling at WNDS.com. Steve throws a good pocket shot right there. We alluded to the uh, record score by Brian Fuller at Lafayette Lanes of 124. Got another note sent in with the newspaper article. This sent to me by Dolly Brown from Amesbury, Massachusetts. And Dan Allard starts out with a bang. Picking up where he left off. Another strike for Dan. He's right on the money, isn't he, right now? He's on fire. Speaking of that uh, article, it's kind of nice we have our own personal clipping service for the show. We thank everybody for finding things in your local newspaper and sending them along to Dick and I at WNDS. 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. That's how to get in touch with us. The old-fashioned way, and we're, believe me, always happy to get snail mail from you. Dolly Brown points out in her note to us, as Dan Allard misses the pin, points out that the young man who set the record, Brian Fuller Jr., is just 22 years old, and Candlepin bull Bowling is in good young hands, as she says. Well, you got to do is just watch our show, and you realize the Dave Hodges and Dan Allards of the world. And, of course, Steve Reno is kind of in that in-between age. He's not a kid anymore, but he's not ready for the senior tour. He has been a great ambassador to the game. He's got the, uh, the kids' bowling show on the local access cable out in Sturbridge on Channel 13 cares very, very deeply for the game of Candleton Bowling. And that'll be a 10 box. <laughs> Just missed the head pin. The one, the nine, and the 10 is still standing. This is a tough shot. He will be open in the fourth. Talked about the younger bowlers. How about some of the older bowlers in the senior pro tour? We have some of the results, the final results for last year. Actually, this is several months old, but 
in case you didn't hear. Judy Wichter was the top tour winner for the women, and Steve Badney in all the tournaments added up was the top man for the uh, season that just ended a little earlier this year. Dan Allard with a spare opportunity here. The 2-4-7 on the left piece of wood way out front should not be a factor. And oh. it went right between the wood and the pin. Don't know if he was trying to touch the wood and deflect it. I doubt it. And he'll take an eight box. So he's cooled off in a hurry. But he has added four pins to his lead. Which was 22 after two, now 26 box to box. Missed the head pin there. Four horsemen left side for Dan Allard. Piece of wood comes out and does not freeze the head pin. And he just picks the two pin right off of it. So Dan will be open in the fourth. And it will be an eight box for Dan Allard. 44 through four will take a break. A 26 pin lead for Dan Allard over Steve Reno. Six boxes remain. Don't go away. We're headed down the home stretch. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues from Lita Lanes in Nashua on WNDS TV. Steve Reno set to bowl on lane 34 at Lita Lanes. He trails by 26 pins. Dan Allard in the lead. You get a look at the nice crowd on hand at Lita Lanes. Steve throws a good first ball and a strike. Didn't look like it was going to be a strike. But they kept falling like dominoes, didn't they? Watch them come from behind now. Here they come, and there they go. One more to go. The five pin gets tripped up. Looking for two in a row. There they go. He was pointing to his grandmother, who's here, who during the commercial break, he walked up, gave her a high five, and he said to her, I'm going to mark out. That's what he said to her. She's got, he's got two strikes in a row now. Dan Allard now tries to respond right through the head pin. Spread eagle plus one. Got the eight pin behind the two. It's been a game of shifting momentum this week between these two great professionals. Dan picks one off the right side. A terrible time to be picking single pins out of a cluster, that's for sure. That's a decent eight box for Dan Allard. Every pin counts at this stage of the game. That's a good strike by Dan Allard, a good clutch strike by Dan Allard. Watch it again. $650 on the line right now for Steve Reno, looking for three strikes in a row, the triple strike jackpot. You watch. Just that close. Looking for three marks in a row. Missed the wood. And a nine box for Steve. <laughs> Pretty close to even now, Dick. Just a handful of boxes to go. Winner takes on Dave Hodge for the championship and the right to be in next spring's Tournament of Champions. Went on the head pin. He's found that head pin. A little too full. Oh, what a shot by Steve. Well, he wasn't able to mark out, but he's marked in three of the four frames since. Great shot by Steve Reno. Dan Allard, tough shot. Working on a strike. So I don't think he's going to use the eight. wood. Gonna try to slide it over. Oh, what a shot by Dan oh, Allard. How about that? 
great shot by Dan Allard, one of the terrific shots we've seen. It was the six and the eight. He cut the six too fine. It went in front of the eight, and then it came back to get it. What a great shot. We are being treated to some great shot making this afternoon. Not going to make the spare there up against a Steve Reno spare. That wood was not at all helpful. And that'll be a nine box. They'll still maintain about a five pin lead if Steve Reno throws a strike here. It's Dan Allard's lead is 15 minus whatever Steve Reno gets on this first ball with a couple of boxes to go. It'll be one exciting finish. Oh. Well, he left himself a tough shot, didn't he? Nice pocket hit. It was fairly thin, but certainly deserving of a better fate than that. 2 4 10. <laughs> Missed it. Open in the ninth. He will need a mark. A, a double strike here is almost essential. At least a mark. They're still falling. Look at this. Can't ask for much more than that with My the kind of hit he had. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Steve steps down to the foul line to look it over. That was the worst first ball he's thrown all day, and look at what it left him. He's got an opportunity here to convert. Not an easy shot, but makeable. There it goes. He'll take it. He'll take it. Lives to see another day. He's at 131. If he gets a strike, Dick, he's got 388, which forces Dan Allard to get one mark. So a strike here would force Allard to get one mark. Otherwise, Dan won't need to do that. No. He's not going to get the strike. He didn't throw a good oh. ball. He only puts three in it. 134. 15 pins is all Dan Allard needs. Dan is down 14. 14 pins to tie, 15 pins to win in two boxes for Dan Allard. Well, Steve, with a, with a better first ball, could have put a little pressure on Dan. Dan didn't throw a good ball there, but he got a break, too. So Dan Allard will win this match. And there's the spare right there that puts it away. Just needs uh, three pins. That'll do it. And there it is. The match is over, and Dan Allard is the winner. So Dan Allard will advance, and he will take on Dave Hodge next week for the championship of this latter series and a berth in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. And Dan Allen finishes with a nine box and a 124 and a three string total of 393 to 381 for Steve Reno. We'll come back to meet our bowlers right after this when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua for the conclusion of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNBS TV. Dan Allard defeats Steve Reno. The final score, 393 to 381. Steve Reno joins us. The consolation prize check for $550. With the bonus money you won last week, and this week it comes to $725. Not a bad payday, but this game of Candleton bowling is kind of befuddling, isn't it? It is. It, uh, you don't want to think about it. That's the worst thing to do when your bowling is thick. You just want to get up there and throw the ball. Um, I was much more relaxed this match. I bowled better. Uh, Dan is, is a awesome bowler i met him last year for the first time and i've been praising him ever since I, i'm trying to get him to join the pro tour and get him up in the worlds uh, he belongs with all the big boys he's a great bowler so it's no uh, surprise what he did today now you have an opportunity to work with a lot of kids and we talked about your tv show that you have out in central massachusetts what do you tell the youngsters about dealing with the ups and downs of the games about having one big string followed by one string that's not quite as good 
sometimes it's really hard not to take it to heart because you love what you're doing but I just try to tell them to stay focused and have fun uh, you're gonna have bad days no matter what uh, you can try to work around it but it, you're gonna have off days so you just gotta deal with it and accept it because you're gonna have more good days than bad so you just gotta hang in there and try to accept it any day with Gandalin bowling is a good day right when you yeah, think of the alternatives sure. it's funny I that's you know right. I've been watching you I've, I've lived in New England for 20 years so I've known of you that long I finally figured out today what the secret of your success is. <laughs> it's what your is grandmother. It? It's my grandmother. Uh, during the last commercial break, you right. gave her a high five and you said, Graham, I'm marking out. Then you threw a double strike. She is a, a big part of my success. She's seen all 50 of my TV appearances, uh, almost 50. I think I'm on 47 or 40. I was saying it was 100. Uh, thank you, but uh, not, not that quite that many. I lost 10 years because of my shoulder. And I've been just starting in the last couple of years to really bowl good again and, and respectable. So uh, she's been, she's played a big part of my, my bowling career. She's seen everything. And I, I, I love her. She's the best. Well, you've had so many great successes, teams, singles, doubles. Looking back over all these years, is there one moment that stands out perhaps that, that means more to you than anything else? Uh, maybe winning the Worlds with my father. Uh, not too many people. As a matter of fact, there's only one other father-son uh, tandem to do that, and that's Charlie Milan and his son. Uh, other than that, my father and I, we won the states. I don't think there's another father-son to do that. Even though Chris Sargent and Mike Sargent, they never got a chance to bowl together. They're, they're both, well, Mike's already in the Hall of Fame, and Chris will be there too someday. But uh, just bowling with my dad in general was really special. Good times. And now the kids are following up. I'm hoping to get a chance with my son uh, and maybe my other son and my daughter at some time if I'm still uh, able to compete. <laughs> but uh, Stevens. Uh, He's, he's definitely following in my, my shoes, and uh, he's, a, he's a great great young man and a great young bowler. Steve, you're a great ambassador for the game. Thank great you. to have you with us. Thank, Thank you very much. Good work in yeah. Steve Bridge. Reno, our All runner right. up here this afternoon, losing to Dan Allard, 393 to 381. Now Dan Allard will step up for the bonus ball contest. We'll tell you in just a second what we need you to get, Dan, as Mike reaches into the bin and pulls out a card. This is David Tullis from Henniker, and David from Henniker wants you to get eight. We have, what, $10 in the jackpot when we started. We had a winner last week, so let's see if we can get eight for David Tullis of Henniker. We get a five, so we get a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. And we welcome Dan Allard, a $393, $100 in bonus money, and that $156 in the middle string. That certainly cures a lot of ails, ailments, doesn't it? It definitely does. The double strike towards the end was huge. I needed it because he looked like he was ready to start putting me away, and I needed something to go back at him and make him uh, think a little bit. Now, Steve says he's trying to get you to get on the Pro Tour and elevate and, and play with the big boys more often. What's what's the future hold for you? Uh, I want to go on the tour, but, I, you know, I got a wife at home. She's pregnant right now, so I'll wait till the uh, baby comes in January, and then maybe next season I'll, uh, I'll join. It does have a tendency to hold you back a little bit, doesn't it? We run into a <laughs> lot of bowlers who suddenly are having children, and so you do know for a fact that it's a boy. Yes, we do. We found out about a month ago, and we're extremely excited. So uh, at what point, at what, how many months old, will you put a bowling ball in your son's hand for the first time? In the time? crib, right away. <laughs> Probably get him with the plastic pins as soon as he can hold, hold the little ball. Well, there's something else called college just ahead, so you got to keep coming on the show and winning money. That's right, I have to, because college isn't getting any cheaper. Hey, another Methuen boy next week. It'll be an all-Methuen championship final that I can, first one I can remember. Yeah, Dave Hodge, I met him briefly up at the roll-off, and he's a young kid. He's a great bowler. He's got a you know a tremendous ball, and he throws a lot of big scores. It should be a good Wait, match. If, if he's a young kid and you're a young kid, what does that make us? Makes us old no, men, Michael. Let's face up to it. We have to face up to it one of these I know. days, Michael. We're getting there. All right, Dan, thanks very much. Congratulations to you. We'll look forward to yeah. seeing you next week. See you later. Okay. Dan Allard, our winner here this afternoon, and we move up the ladder to the championship match next week. Dave Hodge, as you heard, next week, and who will join Jeff Serrett as the second bowler in the Tournament of Champions seating? We'll find out. That does it for us, for Mike Morin and our entire crew, I'm Dick Lutzk. Thanks for watching Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNBS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We'll see you next time. So long, everybody.